Hello and welcome to the Getting Started video for CIS 603 Project Management. In this video, I will show you how to get started with this course and also how to navigate with this course in Canvas. When you open this course in Canvas, you should be able to see a homepage that looks exactly like what you see right now on your screen. Before you actually get started with this course, I highly encourage you to explore some of the most important pages or documents for this course that are provided in that horizontal menu at the bottom. First and foremost, please read the syllabus. This is by far the most important document of this course, outlining all the learning objectives, values, uh, topics, instructional activities, uh, text and other resources, grading, and things like that. So please don't skip any of the sections in the syllabus. Make sure you read carefully every section of the syllabus because this will make you more prepared to succeed in this course. After you're done with the syllabus, uh, please take a look at some of the most important policies at the university in relation to academic honesty, plagiarism, acceptable use policy, attendance, confidentiality of student information, add draw policy, grades, policies in relation to graduation, uh, our catalog, accessibility policy, and also our netiquette policy. Uh, this is a work in progress that is uh, being developed by the university and eventually the netiquette policy uh, will be used by all online programs and online courses. It basically provides guidelines on uh, courses, uh, professional and polite interaction uh, through various channels used in online education. So please take a look at this uh, work in progress uh, netiquette policy as well. Uh, after you explore this policy, you're welcome to take a look at the library resources that we have here at Murray State. Uh, we have a vast collection of electronic resources. Uh, those resources are organized by various subjects uh, pertaining to individual courses and also individual colleges and programs. Uh, also, please take some time to explore the uh, technical support available to you as a student, as a user. So this is where you can uh, request assistance with various technology resources, the ones that are internally supported by Murray State. So after you're done with those pages, you need to click here uh, on this link. In, in the top uh, left corner, you need to click on the Start Here link. And this will bring you to the so-called Module Zero. So this is the module where you will officially get started with this course. And a lot of those items, they are not a part of the course subject matter. They are not related to project management per se. Uh, those items will help you to get started with the subject matter. However, there is a quiz at the end that you will have to take to show me that you understand all the tools and technologies that are being used for this course. And also you understand all the items listed here, especially the syllabus. So let me talk a little bit about uh, Module Zero uh, getting started. Uh, just like any module, it contains an overview. Here at the top, you have a video posted. This is the same video that you are watching right now. So it kind of duplicates the, the content uh, uh, of, of, uh, of the module as, uh, uh, as depicted here at the module overview page. So every module will have an overview. So every module will also list module objectives, meaning the main goals, the main learning outcomes that, that you're expected to accomplish after completing this module. And then the module will list specific activities that you need to complete in order to accomplish module, uh, module level objectives, learning objectives. So let me go briefly through those activities for module one. First of all, if you haven't done this already, uh, take a look at the uh, my faculty page. This is where you can find out more about my education, professional background, my research interest. Uh, if you haven't done this already, please visit our course welcome page. This course introduces you to the subject matter of the course, its main course and module uh, level outcomes, as well as the overall course map. Again, if you haven't done this already, please make sure you read the syllabus. Uh, after that, you need to get a textbook for this course. This textbook is also listed in the syllabus. Now, when it comes to getting a textbook, uh, you have uh, many options, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing it on purpose. I want you to have all those options in terms of the format of the book, and the price. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that either edition six or seven will do. 
Uh, they're almost the same. Uh, the seventh edition contains uh, uh, updated examples. Since I'm using my own examples for most of the topics, for most of the modules, that shouldn't make any difference. Uh, again, you have all kinds of options. You can get uh, a used copy of the sixth edition from Amazon uh, under $10, and that includes shipping. So you can get a book for two, three, five dollars. You can also purchase the seventh edition, either ebook or physical textbook from MSU Bookstore. And here I have a link. So this uh, textbook uh, link will take you to the bookstore of Murray State University. This is where you can uh, buy the seventh and sixth edition if you wish. Um, again, whatever works for you. Like some, I know that some people like a physical textbook because they like you know reading uh, you know, actual pages, you know, flipping those pages. They like the fact that when you buy a physical textbook, you can store it, you can resell it. Other people are fine with ebooks. Whatever works for you, you, uh, you know, get get the textbook that works for you in terms of the format and price. I would like to stress this: you do need to get a textbook. I don't think you will be successful in this course without reading uh, all the chapters uh, that we're covering this course, chapters one through ten. Uh, personally, I'm using the sixth edition when it comes to putting together slides and everything like that. But again, seventh edition is almost identical to what you will see in the sixth edition. Also, browse through student services and resources. You know, this is the kind of support that is available to you as a student. Again, uh, take a look at some of the most important university policies page that also includes the netiquette policy. Uh, familiarize yourself with the uh, learning tools used in this course. Uh, review the minimal technical requirements that you, and skills that you need to have on your side in order to be able to fully utilize the learning tools and the technologies of this course. So after you're done with that, uh, I'm asking you to introduce yourself to other students in class. Uh, this is a graded uh, online discussion assignment. Uh, typically, when it, when it comes to completing uh, a graded online discussion, you need to do two things. First of all, you need to make a quality post in relation to the topic or questions. And when you click on this discussion, you will see some props or questions that you need to address when you introduce yourself. So that's part one. And number two, you need to respond to at least one peer. Uh, the second part uh, is deliberately open-ended. I'm not requiring you to respond in a certain way. Uh, it's up to you how you respond to, to, to a particular uh, uh, a post made by, by another student. So you know, maybe find something that catches your interest, that catches your attention, and then either provide some elaborations or provide critique or, or provide some additional useful examples in relation to a post of a peer. So I'm keeping it open-ended. As long as it's something meaningful, as long as, as you don't just say, oh, I agree, you know, please tell me more. You know, it has to be something deeper and more meaningful than that. And if you're wondering how I will grade those, dis those online discussions, I have a rubric that I'm using for grading online discussions. So all of those items in relation to the uh, depth and breadth of your uh, original posts and responses are reflected in this rubric. So please take a look at this grading rubric. Uh, after that, uh, please, if you have any questions, please post your questions to the course Q&A thread. Uh, this is not something that is graded. You know, if you don't have questions, you don't have to post anything. And once you're, uh, once you're done uh, with, with this discussion part, you need to proceed to the quiz. This is the first quiz that you will take uh, during this uh, uh, session. It's called Introduction uh, to the Course Quiz. So most of the questions come from these items, but mostly from the syllabus. Now, unlike all other quizzes in this course, uh, uh, this, this quiz is timed. Uh, also, this quiz requires the use of Lockdown Responders Browser and a working webcam. Now, the reason, uh, and you only have one attempt for this quiz. Now, the reason uh, this quiz is set up this way is that I want you to be prepared for the format of the midterm and final exam, because midterm and final exam will have the same kind of format as this introduction to the course quiz. It will be timed, you will have only one attempt, and you will have to use Lockdown Browser and, and Webcam to take uh, that quiz. Now, uh, Lockdown Browser is an anti-cheating software. It's a browser that you need to use to access uh, quizzes or exams protected by the software. Uh, when you click on this link, and if you don't have Lockdown Browser installed on your computer, the system will give you a message. It will say, the Canvas system will say something like, this quiz requires Lockdown Browser, please download it here. And it will give you a download link. So this is where you download Lockdown Browser. Now, you want to be able to download Lockdown Browser by just Googling it because it has to do with the licensing that Murray State University has. So please use this download link. Also, you will have to use a web camera, a working web camera connected to the Internet to take this quiz. There will be some security procedures uh, that rely on this web camera. Before you start the quiz, you'll have to 
show you surrounding. You will take the camera and tilt it a little bit to show what's surrounding you. Uh, you'll have to show your ID, the driver's license, or your student ID uh, into the camera so that we capture your ID. Also, uh, as you work on this quiz, you have to be visible to the camera. If you disappear from the camera, the system will um, uh, send me uh, a message about that. And overall, uh, your, uh, you taking this, this quiz and the midterm and final exam, the entire process will be recorded. And uh, the certain, I mean, it's, uh, to be honest, I don't watch like every video of every student taking the exam, but the system has a very uh, elaborate um, um, functionality for flagging certain suspicious moments, let's say when you move, when you disappear. So all the suspicious moments are automatically sent to me for review. So this is the anti-cheating procedure that we are required to use uh, by the College of Business. Now, uh, Respondus Lockdown Browser is one of those externally supported tools. If you need any help, you need to click on the support link here. Uh, I don't think you will be able to get any support from the uh, IT department at Murray State University because, again, they're not responsible for this tool. This is a cloud-based solution that is licensed to Murray State University by this company. Now, when it comes to completing modules, any kind of module, you can access all those items you know, on the to-do list, you know, discussion items, quizzes, either directly from the course overview page by clicking here, or you can click next to go from one item to the next. So I'll just show you once again, I'll go through those items and I'll bring your attention to some of the details that I haven't covered while giving this overview. So when you click next, it will go to the first item, which is meet your faculty page. So this is where my bio is provided together with my office hours and, and contact information. Again, you don't have to remember anything as long as you remember my name, Dr. Vlad, you should be fine. So when you click next, you have course introduction, a course welcome page. So this is where you'll find out about the content of this course, course and module learning outcomes, the overall course map, and also the uh, you'll see the attribution statement as to where the images that I'm using in this course are coming from. After that, you will be able to access our syllabus. Again, please make sure you read every section. Then you'll be taken to the MSU bookstore. So this is where you can get your textbook, either six or seven edition. You just need to select semester. Then the course code, CIS. Then you will select CS603, which is the project management course. And here's my name. So, so those are the options that you have. Again, you don't have to buy through the bookstore. You have other options like Amazon, whatever works for you in terms of price and format. Also, here you have links to student services and resources available to you as a student. Please explore them. Uh, please see whether there is something that will help you in relation to this and other courses. Uh, take a look at some of the most important policies of the universities of the university. Uh, take a look at the learning tools that we'll be using. By far, the three most important tools are Canvas. This is, uh, you know, this is the learning management system that we're using. Also, we'll be using uh, YouTube a lot in this course. Uh, I encourage you to go to our course playlist. You'll go If you click on this link, you'll go to our YouTube channel and you will see all video lectures for chapters 1 through 10 already posted. And uh, I may add some additional videos as we proceed on the course, depending on you know, how things are going. Sometimes if I feel that students are um, you know, confused about a particular topic, then I'll go ahead and record a new video. I'll announce that video to everybody. So also we have, we will be using Zoom, we'll be using Turnitin, we'll be using Respondus Lockdown Browser and Project Libra. Uh, this is the open source software for working on your uh, uh, individual project, which involves creating a project management plan. Uh, more specifically, you can use this software to create your work breakdown structure, your Gantt chart and your networking diagram. Uh, again, you're not required to use this tool. You can use anything else that, that you wish to create those uh, items. For example, you can even use Excel to create a Gantt chart or PowerPoint. But I recommend this tool. Uh, the good thing about this tool, it's open source, it's free, it's available for Mac, it's available for IBM PC compatible computer. Now the downside is, is, is uh, it, it's usually the case for many open source products, there's limited support, but they do have a vibrant community uh, that offers advice and help with this tool. After that, you should look at the minimum technical requirements and skills required for completing this course. Uh, that, that involves uh, your browser and your overall abilities to interact with certain basic uh, you know, applications like Microsoft Office. So please take a look at those, make sure you have those skills and you meet those technical requirements. So this is the course Q&A discussion thread. If you have any questions, it's not required, but if you do have any questions, this is where you can post your question. 
And this is where you have to introduce yourself. So again, in order, this is a graded online discussion, the first that you will have in this course. So here you have a question or some props. So I'm asking you to introduce yourself by telling your name, where you're from, what major you're studying, about your professional experience, if you have any, about your career aspirations, if you have any, your hobbies and anything else that you feel is important for others to know. And then uh, once you create your own post, uh, sometime after that, but before the deadline, you have to respond to other people in a meaningful way. And then once again, uh, this discussion will be graded using the rubric that I showed you. Uh, after that, you should be ready to take our introduction to the course quiz that requires Responders Lockdown Browser and a webcam. And this will be the end of the so-called Module 0, and you will proceed to Module 1. I'll go briefly through Module 1 because it has a structure that is similar to most of the modules that you will see in this course, uh, Modules 1 through 7. Uh, just like any other module, it has an introduction that gives you a brief summary uh, about uh, of the topics covered by this module. You will also have module objectives, uh, learning objectives, and how they are linked to course level objectives. And then you will go to module activity. So first, uh, you know, in, in module one, you will have to read certain things. Uh, the entire module is related to your uh, individual project, which is your which is your project management plan. So here you will access the template. Uh, it's an important project. Its weight is 40% towards your final grade. Uh, then I will ask you to familiarize yourself with the grading rubric. So this rubric will be used to give you the grade for this project. Uh, then you can take a look at some sample project management plan. Uh, this is something that was submitted before in this course. Here you can uh, download and install Project Libre, which is again not required. You can use other software tools such as Microsoft Project or even Microsoft Word Excel or PowerPoint for creating uh, your work breakdown structure, your Gantt chart, and your networking diagram. And here you have a brief tutorial on how to use Project Libre. After that, you know, once you go, once you read all of those materials, I will ask you to discuss your project management plan ideas. So tell me for which organization uh, will you write your project management plan for and what will be the project. In general, I'm okay with any kind of project idea as long as it's small, manageable, related to IT, information technology. And also, ideally, I would prefer that your idea is related to your current or, uh, work or future career aspiration. I like when people integrate uh, the knowledge that they receive in this class with whatever they are doing right now, professionally, or whatever they are planning to do. So I'm hoping that this course will help you in, in your current or future work. Uh, after that, I will ask you to read my effective writing handout. I mean, largely, this project is about writing things, so I want to make sure that your writing is effective. And then you will take the effective writing quiz to show me that you understand those effective writing uh, rules and suggestions contained in this handout. So when you, uh, when you click next, you will, go, you will go through all of those items listed here one by one. Once you complete all of them, you will enter uh, module two. In module two, I'll give you a brief overview. I'm asking you to read chapter one. Again, whether it's ebook or physical book, you need to select the form that works for you. After that, uh, you know, after that, you can watch my video presentation. It's, it's based on PowerPoints related to Chapter 1. I'm also giving you a Chapter 1 slide, so you can take notes or review uh, you know, for the exam. After that, I'm asking you to take Chapter 1 quiz. Uh, unlike the first quiz, this quiz is not timed, and you have two attempts for this quiz. So you take, you take it once. If you miss some questions, uh, the system will tell you which questions you got wrong, so you can go ahead and retake the quiz. So this is not like a the kind of quiz that catches you off guard. Uh, this is more like a self-assessment, self-learning tool, so that you know what you know and what you don't know from a particular chapter. Also, the format of questions that you will see on those quizzes will be exactly the same as the format of questions that you will see uh, on the midterm and final exam. So if you keep getting uh, uh, bad grades, I know, I'm hoping it's not going to happen, but if you keep getting bad grades for those quizzes, now this is a red flag. Uh, you know, this is the warning sign that you need to do something different in order to prepare better for the final or midterm exams. After you read chapter one or any other chapter, typically uh, there's an additional material that either goes in depth on a particular topic covered by the chapter or provides you a modern example of best practices in relation to a particular chapter topic. So here I'm asking you to read this IT project management and famous failures, classic mistakes and best practices article. And then you'll have to discuss it uh, in a graded online discussion thread using uh, the props or question that you will see once you click on it. And then you'll do the same for, for chapter two. You, you read uh, you either uh, read, you read chapter two, then you need to watch my video presentation, slides are available, 
you'll take the quiz, then there's an additional reading or video, in this case it's a reading, and then you'll have to discuss this additional reading or video, video posted. So, uh, so most modules, they have the, the uh, following outline that is quite similar to module one and module two. So once again, uh, the main goal of this video was to help you to get started with this course and also to explain uh, how to navigate through this course in Canvas. Uh, one last uh, thing about navigating this course and communication uh, that I would like to bring to your attention is announcements. So I post my announcements here at the top. Right now, this area is blank because there are no announcements. You know, the course hasn't started yet officially. So whenever I have something important to say, or let's say in relation to deadlines or anything else that is happening in the course, I'll make an announcement. So please read those announcements. I know that nowadays people are bombarded with all kinds of emails and notifications from social media. And I don't want my announcements to be perceived as spam. So I promise to you, uh, I will be very conservative. I'm not going to create an announcement unless it's something important. So please make sure you read those. When the semester starts, uh, I will send you some reminders about deadlines. If I feel like you may miss a particular deadline for a quiz. So I'll use this uh, inbox feature. But after that, uh, after the first week or two, I will stop doing that. I will assume that you understand what the deadlines are. And if you miss a deadline, that's your deliberate choice and not something that happened by accident. So once again, uh, welcome to this course. Uh, if, you, if you're having any issues completing this course, navigating through this course, please let me know by sending me an email or by posting uh, uh, through, uh, through Canvas Inbox or by posting your question to the uh, course Q&A discussion thread. Um, unfortunately, you know, it could be that something is still not fine-tuned, something is malfunctioning. So if you bring this to my attention, I'll try to quickly fix the problem and address your issue. So best of luck with this course. Thank you.